Hello, and welcome back to Many Adventures Mini. So this week I'm doing things a little bit differently. Once again, that's starting to become a running theme on this channel, but with the model this week, I decided to go ahead and do my basing techniques and my Zenithel highlighting that I do before painting sometimes. I, I chose to do it this week before starting painting on the video because it's the same process I do every time. I've already showed it a couple times, so this time I just did it ahead of time so we can jump straight into the normal painting process that I go through. If you guys liked seeing that part of the video and would like me to bring it back, go ahead and leave me a comment or message me in some other way, and I can always bring it back in later videos. Uh, the other thing that's different is this week I am working with a model that's not originally intended for D&D, though it can certainly be used that way. Uh, this model is from the War Machine slash Hordes uh, war, tabletop war game. Uh, it's called a Naga Night Lurker from the Legion of Everblight faction. I'll leave a, a link down to the company's page. They're called Privateer Press. It's a fantastic game, and I love playing it. So if anybody's interested, go check that out. I really enjoyed painting this one, and it's a more expensive miniature. So as you might expect, the quality of the sculpt is a bit higher than what I'm normally working with, and I really enjoyed working with this one. So let's go ahead and jump into the painting. All right, so here is the model uh, after I've done my basing and Zenithil lighting. Uh, and as you can see, it's really brought out a lot of the high detail that this model has, and it will really show up well with these painting techniques that I've been working on developing. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm starting off here using this dark alien purple color, as well as this war paint mixing medium that I'm mixing into it. Uh, this allows me to use less water in order to thin down the consistency into a more transparent paint. That way I don't have too much water in the mixture so it doesn't uh, collect uh, too much but it's still transparent and I'm able to apply it and allow the undershading that I've applied with the airbrush to show through here. So I just take that and I'm applying this to the more fleshy skin bits of this miniature. This is in theme with how I've painted all of the other miniatures I've used for this particular game. Uh, it's something that I've been doing for a long time, way before I ever started the channel, so I'm continuing along my theme with that and going with this dark purple skin. And really, the, the Zenithal is really helping me out here. I have to go over all the skin here in a couple of layers in most places. Uh, a few more layers in the bright spots than in the dark spots, since the dark spots take on the dark color and I'm just giving it a hint of purple and then it's a shadow, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But then on the higher spots it still looks like a white after one or two passes, so I had to sometimes do closer to three or four passes before it actually just looked like a brighter purple. This miniature also didn't make it easy with the way that it sculpted, with how it curves around. It's very visually interesting, but a little bit difficult to get in there with the paint and do it properly, but I still enjoyed working on it. It, it was an interesting challenge for sure. And next I come over with this gunmetal color because that's also part of the theme that I use. All of these uh, miniatures in this particular faction have this kind of uh, carapace going on and I've been going with a metallic carapace theme with these guys so I'm continuing that on here and it's also an experiment to see how well this Zenithel undershading method works with metallics and I wouldn't say that it doesn't work but it's certainly not nearly as effective as it is with just normal colors and I have to do several coats in order to get full coverage which these paints are normally pretty good and that I only have to usually do one thin coat and get good coverage but with mixing it down with the mixing medium and thinning it down to try and take advantage of my underpainting I did have to do several coats uh, as you might expect but it also didn't have as much contrast between the darker areas and the lighter areas as the other colors uh, there certainly is still some contrast there but the contrast is a lot subtler and you don't see quite as much of a difference. So that didn't quite come out as I was hoping and I'll, I'm gonna have to fiddle around with it 
more in the future, but I got it to where I liked it for now with this session, and I'm going to stick with it a while and see if I like it before I decide if I need to change anything. But, yeah, it, it, that's pretty much all about that. It's pretty straightforward. So, let's see. I think I'm going to be going on to the next bit here in just a minute. Yes. Uh, now I go ahead and use my dark stone. It's my preferred uh, base layer for my ground coverage. So I go ahead and just thoroughly coat everything in that just like I usually do. And I get these rocks that I've placed underneath the tail for some nice uh, visual contrast. I, I thought that it looked cool. So that's just why I went with it. And I come over and I use this dragon red here just to add some more color and contrast onto this mouth area it makes it stand out a little bit better and gives an extra pop of color into the whole thing and i also have to do a couple layers of this uh, this one i'm not exactly taking advantage of my undercoating so much as just i needed a pop of color there and so i threw it on and I keep having to go back and touch up areas once they dry on this metallic area and on the purple skin as well. Just because of the method I'm using, I have to go back whenever it dries. But now that the ground is dried, I use that uniform gray that I have as well and go back over and I just use a normal brush and kind of do like almost a pseudo dry brushing method, not trying to get full coverage, but just kind of try and hit as many of the high points as I can with that uniform gray before I pull out my black wash. And I basically just give this guy a thorough coating in this since I wasn't able to get as much of the contrast from the highlighting method I was using before. So I use this to get into all the nooks and crannies and make everything else pop out and put it on the ground coverage as well. This, this is one of the few times when I actually want to cover the entire model. Normally you want to be a bit more specific with it. But once that dries is when I actually pull out my bone color in order to pick out the teeth. And it's difficult to see, but this guy also has a long string of tiny limbs with claws on them. He's actually almost more like a centipede than a snake, which isn't immediately obvious and is kind of creepy if you don't like that kind of thing. But I go ahead and go pick out all the little bony bits sticking out along his sides as well as from the teeth. And this takes a while because it's a finicky little detail and I needed to make sure everything was dry before I went through. And it's difficult to tell with my homemade wash because it dries very shiny. So it's difficult to tell if it's shiny because it's a gloss or if it's actually still wet. So once or twice I accidentally had a spot that was still a little damp. And then I have this step here. This is because the rules of the game that this model is from. Uh, it's very useful to know where the front half of the base is versus the back half of the base. It has an effect in the rules, so I mark out the front arc of the base with this bright red color just to make it very obvious, and then I blacken the back like I normally do with my bases just to make them look nicer and crisper. And when I'm done with that, I use the Burnt Umber Wash to just give a slight browning, aging kind of effect to all the bone colors that I did before, trying to be careful not to let it spill over onto any of my metallics and make those look odd. But it's a pretty quick step and goes fast, just a very light dabbing of that stuff. And then we're nearly done. I start using my scenic glue over the top of my basing so that I can put my flocking on, and I use a slightly different technique. I just take it off of my cork here and just dip it in and then shake it off. It, it's fast and dirty, but definitely gets the job done. And lastly, we just apply our, our varnish and that's what you need. So here's the final images. I did really like it. I had a lot of fun with this one. So I think it looks great and I'm gonna have fun using it in my war game. So let's go ahead and go back to the normal camera and. I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you have any feedback, please leave it in a comment down in the description. If anybody is interested, I do sell some of the miniatures that I paint on the channel on my Etsy shop. There will be a link to that also down in the description. 
If you enjoyed watching, please give me a like. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever my videos go up. And with that, I'll see you all again next week.